We don't play the social game. We are social. Power 98.5. Hi, this is Dan Aykroyd. He's progressive. He's beautiful. He's thoughtful. He's intelligent. He's powerful. He's positive. He is Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. You're listening to Power 98.5, powered by United Angels Dream, your number one resource for public relations, entertainment, and multimedia. Contact them today at unitedangelsdream.com. Empowering listeners from the U.S. to the U.K. Live on air with Stephen Cuoco. Hey, what's up? My name's Grant Kenoki. I'm a singer, songwriter, producer, and artist, and you're listening to Power 98.5. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, whether you're listening to Live On Air with Stephen Cuoco on your iOS or Android app, Alexa, MyTuner, Live FM Radio, or even on the Power 98.5 satellite radio website, power985.com. We are your premier destination for all great things, news, music, sports, talk, reality TV, and all the important stuff. <laughs> I, you guys have to always get me chuckling and starting off with a laugh every time. But you know what? It's a great reset when I've got my team here. We've got Brian. We've got my assistant, Christina. We've got my team out there in Manchester, UK. Love you guys very much, especially my tech team that keeps this station going. And to my Northeast fam, my New York, New Jersey fam. Thank you. Love you guys very much. We've got James Pendergrass today. Whether you're listening to us on the app or the website, power985.com, click the bottom icon. It's the messenger in the right-hand corner. If you have any questions for James, if you want to share a love or you want to do a shout out, that runs 24-7. My team and myself will get those messages. Once again, click the messenger in the bottom right-hand corner of the app or the website and send us and share with us your love and support do we have uh, do we have i I don't know if i want to i'm not doing nothing and talking about nothing in the news really i mean except for what instagram yeah i mean now they're doing the pay per play or pay for play uh just like twitter copying off of them 14.99 so now if you want a blue check mark you're going to be paying for it. I don't have one. I know that Instagram picks and choose who they verify. You would think being after being in the industry for over 30 years, public relations in the media, working with the people I've worked with, having the relationships I have with the networks, I would have a blue check. Now, out of all these years, I actually don't give a shit whether I have a blue check mark or not. And here's the reason why. And it doesn't mean I don't want one, but I'm going to, I'm not going to pay for it. I'm, I'm going to get it one day and probably when I least expect it and I'll probably look at it and I'll feel happy and I'll, I'll say internally, it's about time. Here's, here's where we're at from a public relations viewpoint, as well as media, we're not going to understand or know the legitimacy of whether someone has paid for the blue check or if they got it because they got it. And we know a lot of people on Instagram and Facebook, even TikTok who have blue checks that shouldn't even have one. That's my opinion. I'm saying it. It's like, why should a bodybuilder with a semi-erected penis wearing Calvin Klein underwear who calls himself a fitness trainer who's really a porn star, why should that person have a verified account when they're selling and promoting porn? It does not make sense to me. Now, if you're a porn star, great, but don't call yourself a fitness trainer and then be half naked in all your photos. The legal definition, and this is a fact, the legal definition for porn is to incite and or induce arousal. To incite or induce arousal. So a person who is a fitness trainer, half naked, doing juicy fruiting for their LGBT clientele while calling themselves straight, they get verified. Professional people like myself and many others 
we don't have a blue verified check. And here's the here's the catch 22 on that. Once it's rolled out and it's a pay to play blue check mark to be verified, it goes into like that paid media aspect. It is now a marketing and advertising tool. It's no longer an asset or a commodity for anything else, no matter what they tell you. When you pay for a service to obtain a certain status, a certain level of requirement for a certain role or position, and you and once again, you pay for that, it removes the value, the integrity, and the quality of that position or the positioning of what that is for, whether it's a title, it's a rank, it's a blue check, whatever it is. Moving forward, whether someone has a blue check already and you're going to be able to have it and it's going to be free for you, don't sit there with a grin and smile. Once this is rolled out, which I believe it's next week, and people start paying for it, the value of that check mark has now and will change. And it is no longer the value in which it once held. And that's why I'm not going to sweat. That's why I'm not going to stay angry. That's why I'm not going to have really any feelings over it at all. Because anyone who does have a blue check mark who thought they were hot shit and thought, ooh, I got this. Well, um, you can take a big one and shove it where you poop. Because the fact of it is, is that this new rollout, yeah, it bamboozles it. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. May have been a little bit long-winded about that, but I, I feel absolutely at peace. I had, I'm going to be honest, I was angry for a couple years why I kept getting denied, 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 denied. I had people in the media who helped me out to put articles out there to help me to get that verification. Still, for whatever reason don't have it and I don't give a crap whether I do or don't. I'll get it when I have when I'm on my own show and if I ever get on Netflix, I just cast for Big Brother season 25. I'm going to cast for The Mole. I know they just opened up auditions for that. I'm going to keep casting. I put a, a big blast out uh, notification to producers, writers, all of my closest friends in the industry, they know I want to get in front of the camera. They know I want to be in TV. I don't care if it's scripted or unscripted, a supporting role, film. It is time. I am ready. I'm ready to show the world what I'm all about. Uh, in addition to doing public relations and being an award-winning publicist, two-time award-winning publicist, and a uh, journalist and media personality. Ryan Murphy, did you, <laughs> Brian, did you uh, check out Ryan Murphy's Twitter? Four-time Olympic gold medalist was just on my show. When, Christina, when was he on? Refresh my memory. January 20th, he was on. He shared it on Twitter. When I say my DMs were blowing up, they, I, they were. It was the second time Ryan was on the show. He's a really good friend. I really appreciate him. He's him and Bridget. They got a wedding coming up. You, did you? you uh, did you guys see the uh, black and white uh, photos? They were on the boat. Yeah, they're a great couple. I would be shocked, shocked if they don't end up on the cover of People magazine. Seriously, they they're the epitome of what People magazine would look for. And he's been publishing People already. Uh, so if you haven't heard that one, we will re-air that episode with Ryan Murphy. You can check the schedule. Go to power985.com. It's uh, on, uh, where is it? You can go to live music and then talk shows. The schedule's there. It's in two different places. You can't miss it. However, it is available on the podcast channels. That is there for you if you don't have the time to catch up or you want to share it with your friends and family, it is available on Amazon Music, Amazon Audible, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. As always, this is not a podcast. This is a radio show on a radio station syndicated in 200 countries. Keep that in mind. <laughs> I've got to remind, it still bugs me when people are like, oh, Stephen, I love your podcast. It's not a podcast. Yes, it's available on podcast channels. This is a radio show. I've worked very hard to have a 
radio show. <laughs> Brian's looking at me. Uh, we're going to get right to it. Can you guys, did you guys send that over to me? I'm pulling it up now. Thank you, Christina. James Pendergrass. He's a fan favorite. Uh, Netflix, Love Island, season four. Big shout out to his representative, Ava Medina. Thank you, Ava, for putting this together. And a big shout out uh, to James' dad. Ava spoke highly about uh, James's father, uh, how he's involved in James' career and the, the embellishments of the love and support that his family is offering James. We're going to go to his Instagram. All great things, all awesome things about Mr. James Pendergrass. His Instagram, James Pendergrass, J-A-M-E-S-P-E-N-D-E-R-G-R-A-S-S, -S, add the underscore, and he's worth being verified. I see he's verified. I don't, I, I'm going to tell you, I'm looking at it now. I'm liking this Instagram. Yeah, he's not Juicy Fruit, and this looks good. Yeah, he's one of the, he's one of the cool, good, straight ones that know how to have a great, uh, this is a really great Instagram. I'm liking it. He's into fitness, loving the black and white photos. Yeah, this is good. And listen, if, if somebody besides James, if you happen to be in a world of fitness and bodybuilding, you are juicy fruiting, I'm not going to hold that against you. Uh, but the biggest thing, and I'm, and I'm going to put it on record, don't claim that you're straight when you know that you're living off of the welfare of gay men. That doesn't make any sense to me. That's just like a straight woman who marries a gay man. How the hell don't you know he's gay? All right? I, that, I'm just putting it that way. And why I'm saying these things, listen, I'm Italian, Sicilian, Puerto Rican, and Brazilian from New Jersey, and I'm not hetero. But I don't go out there and embellish myself in the gay community either. But I'm just going to say certain things don't make sense. I spoke to my business manager. I've kept my lip tight. I do things now that I you know, was told should not do in PR. But I'm voicing my opinion. Probably because I'm going to be turning 49 in April. And honestly, I'm in Aries. I don't give a shit in general. And I really don't give a shit at the age of 49. I've built over a three-decade career. And I'm not worried about some old white person coming out of the blue off of their yacht trying to sabotage me or what I'm doing or any ignorant closet case person trying to do something to try to, you know, put a mouthpiece on me. I'm sharing from the heart. Sometimes it may sound subjective. I don't mean to be abrasive. You just get us to a certain point in your age where you just don't give a shit. And it's not that you don't care. It's just you don't focus and worry about having to be perfect all the time. And that was a situation that I dealt with, and that was a problem when I was younger, is perfection. Having a, a military officer father, having family in the military, law enforcement, some that were in a government official. And I just grew up, and I'm like looking around, like, I just want to be me. I don't want to worry about putting on pretenses for other people for the sake of what? Yes, I want to be a good person for my family. I want to hold a lot of integrity for my family name. I want to do a lot of things. But also at the same time, I'm not the type of person that keeps my mouth shut. A lot of people don't hear it out in the open, but my closest people, friends and family, they do hear how I feel. And I am human. I've, I, I need and want to talk to somebody and decompress at times because this industry, and it was said by a very well-established producer, you any industry is difficult. But I'll tell you this, working in the entertainment industry to deal with what we have to deal with. And there still is racism in this industry. These people still want to publish white people. They still want to see white face. It is difficult. And as someone who's biracial, I know what my Latino community goes through. I know what, and I understand from a different perspective of what people of color go through. I'm lucky that I have white skin and, and I've made it out. 
but not many people that I know of in the Latino community that are a lot darker than me, they're still treated as though they should be in subservitude. And that's got to change. We all started, when you look at the beginning of time, even Jesus, we were all dark. We, were, we all had beautiful color before we became, before the world or humans became white. And I'm really looking forward and love people like James Pendergrass and his generation of millennials and younger people generate, you know, the people that are younger and what they're doing in a world is they're really looking inward to outward as to better understand why we need to look at all areas, levels, and layers of humanity and really break down what is the value of it and where our attention and focus should be and staying away from compiling all of these problematic scenarios and problems that have not gotten us anywhere. And as someone who's lived in this world for almost five decades, I appreciate the millennials. Yes, they're not always easy to deal with. They have a bad rep of being entitled, but I'm going to tell you, I'm, I come from this, I'm, I was born in 74 and very much an 80s kid. We were entitled. We were entitled and angry. James's generation is not angry. They're a little bit different. But every generation has some sort of, I would think, of entitlement. And if we think of it, boomers are entitled. And you want to know why boomers are, I think, one of the worst of being entitled? Because they think all of the generations after them should bow down and worship their feet as though they're Jesus. They think that we should wait for them to die for us to have any value and to continue to prove while they're alive of why we do have value. How does that make sense? It doesn't. So these are the things I talk about that maybe no one else will. I put it into a different perspective, and that's where we're going. Fitness, fashion, wellness. He's in Los Angeles, season four contestant of Too Hot to Handle on Netflix. Uh, and, And he says here on his Instagram, he is the Lone Star Ranger. But even more than that, Head on over to his Instagram because this guy, this young professional guy is really, I'm going to say, accredited with a very good way of being a professional in the world of fitness and bodybuilding. I am really, really impressed by what I'm seeing. You know, the, the flexing, the photos, the sense of maturity, I can tell by looking at his eyes that James is very good at reading people. And I'm going to tell you, I didn't watch Too Hot to Handle season four. Uh, I'm only going off of perception. I do have a background working in mental health as well. I did share that with Ava, his representative. These are really good to go back. I like this. Uh, Him on the field, like on the track, really good stuff. In the pool, in the gym. Like it's, it, it's really awesome. And you go down even more. He definitely has to be intuitive because he understands the matrix. I like that setup right there. James, thank you for being a guest here on live on air with Stephen Cuoco. Good morning. Good morning. How's it going? How's it going? Doing well. I, I'm on your Instagram. I'm going through it. Normally, I would shun and be like, oh, God, another half-naked muscle guy, <laughs> even though he's good looking. But I don't see you juicy fruit. And what I like is you're not popping out your 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 manhood. You're, you're, <laughs> you're, you're not telling me that, oh, hey, here, I'm a straight guy and I want to be straight. But hey, gay man, make sure you lust and want to lick and greasy goo all over me and, and send me all tons of shitload of all your money on my OnlyFans. Oh, uh, no, I, I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't gone down that route yet. Um, I'm kind of just, um, I mean, I'm enjoying the process. I'm enjoying being here in the first place and being given the platform to make and content create. So, um, yeah, I, I really enjoy just getting back and talking to people and, and enjoying being in the moment. That's like my main thing to do. Yeah. I've, uh, I really appreciate, I had a great conversation with Ava. We had a really great heart to heart. I'm very happy to have gotten to know her. You did a great job picking a really good representative for yourself. 
Uh, once again, both her and I, you know, she knows I'm in PR. I don't know if she knew that when she reached out to me. Uh, and, and a big shout out to your dad, because she spoke very highly from what I got from our conversation of how, if I'm getting this correct or how I heard it, he's involved in your career. What does your dad want for you? Um, what's happening behind the scenes that I don't know about? Oh, he really just, I mean, honestly, he just wants to see to the greatness unfold. Like he, he has, he has a vision of, you know, how everything's going to plan out, but he lets me kind of just run the show and he's basically there just behind the scenes, helping me with just, you know, just a whole different list of things when it comes to just, you know, being in the right position, talking to the right people, being in the right rooms. Like he's one of the greatest when it comes to that. And I really appreciate all he does for me. He's, he's, he's my right hand man for sure. I'm looking at your TikTok. Your TikTok definitely has a different vibe than your Instagram. It looks as though it looks as though I see more of you, James. Like there's more of you here. More. That's yeah, yeah. That's that's where the personality comes out. I feel like Instagram is more of like the business side. I mean, that's where a lot of people find me for work and, and such like that. But um, TikTok is more of just expressing the feelings, the thoughts, the emotions. That's kind of where it all comes to play, and people really resonate with that on that app. So that's, that's kind of where I go for. Would you ever think of building out Instagram to have more of a vibe of what I'm seeing here on TikTok? Cause it's powerful. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's weird because Instagram has been, has been the, it's been, it's been the front running for, for business in terms of like brand deals and opportunities, ambassadorships for the last two decades in a sense. So TikTok is just a new emerging app where it's turning into a place where you can really be very expressive and show your deep side, your vulnerability side. It shows a lot. Now trying to imp implement that into Instagram would take a bit of a toll in terms of, you know, showing the, the vulnerability to the public and to like the brands and the sponsorships and, and whatnot. But um, it's definitely something I plan to do in the future. Fitness. All right. So this is where I, I would like for you to help me understand. I normally do a hard search. I did receive your one sheet. The one sheet looks exceptional. We've <laughs> got fitness. We've got fashion. We've got wellness. And then we've got reality TV. Mm -hmm. Where do yeah. you shine the most, James, out of all four of these? Ooh, I, I honestly believe that I shine the most when it comes to wellness. Because I'm, I'm one of the biggest advocates for peace, prosperity, and balance. Those are like my three things that I try and live by and I try and teach about. Um, people have gone through social media these past couple of years and their perspective on life has changed tremendously. And one thing I try and remind people about all the time is that social media isn't a real place. You know, Instagram isn't a place you go. TikTok isn't a place you go. Twitter YouTube, you know, these aren't real places. So I try and I try and push the idea of getting out there, putting yourselves out there and going into the real world and having those interactions with people one on one, because those are the experiences that are actually last and are memorable. TikTok and Instagram and all the social media stuff is here today and going to be gone tomorrow. So live in the moment. And that's kind of like my main philosophy. I'm looking at this video here from your Instagram. I'm going to pull this up here. Let's see if it'll load. Sometimes. Uh, here we go. Is it coming up oh. yet? Hold on. Fake show yet. We even got TV legend Mario Lopez in on it. Welcome to your first challenge. My heart is pumping. <laughs> Season four has landed. And we're pushing our wildest singles yet to their very limits like never before. If you do not trust them, you can choose to forfeit $10,000. Oh, hell no! Will you have faith or will you forfeit? I have given our new arrivals one free kiss to use on their dates. You want to cut things off with me completely to pursue things with her? She's been in here for one day. I searched out the darkest place. I feel a sense of love that I've never felt before. I didn't think I was going to cry. Looking for love. I've never liked someone as much as I like you. I need more. No one can resist the massage of the bum bum. I must stay strong. You're going to rule break with me. I want to be bad. 
so bad. When it comes to these horny singles, oh. no matter how hard Lana tries. Here's the thing. I've watched every single or single season except for because of this interview, I am going to go into watching season four, if not starting tonight, then this coming week. Love the clips. To those that are listening, we've got James Pendergrass here. He is a fan favorite from season four, Netflix, Too Hot to Handle. I'm looking forward, James, to finding out and to seeing what you do here. Because even from the promo clip that I just watched. And how old are you? I recently just turned 24 on Saturday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. <laughs> As I said in the beginning, when we were opening of the show, you seem to come across and to be very visual. There's just something in your eyes and even more, and why I love the, the texture and the nuances of this experience with you, having you here live and to have watched that video. And I understand the contracts. Okay, I understand. <laughs> I, I do. I'm very familiar with, with Netflix and the, the studio contracts of what you guys can say and do and not do. <laughs> what I see in you is a level of maturity for being 24. This is what I love most. You guys are so mature for your age, and you're actually not a millennial. You're a Gen Z. Yes, what, I am. Yes, indeed. Yeah. What is it about you from the show that for those people who've watched or like myself, I'm going to be watching. Do you want to set the record straight on something that could be out there that either someone misperceived or wrote about you and you're like, wait a minute, no. You may think you know about me from the show. This is who I am. This is what really happened. This is the real narrative and context of my truth. Yeah, Um Ooh, there's there's been a lot of accusations and there's a lot been a lot of fallacies and things that have been said. And if, if I really wanted to go down that road, we could be on this call till the crack of dawn, honestly. Um, but I think the main one that came across that was kind of kind of um, aggravating in a sense was that I picked Britain as my partner on the show, and people were very upset with me considering the fact that I didn't choose an African American woman or one of the black women from the show immediately. Um, and that was still, that, that, that took a toll on me mentally in, in the beginning of the, of the show, the show rollout, because, you know, everybody had their opinion and it was just so, it was so hands-on, like everybody had something to say and it was so, it was very fast. It was kind of hard because like we couldn't really explain much about it because of the contract, of course. Um, but mainly like the main reason why I chose Britain was because me and her clicked on a level that I didn't click with anybody else with from, on the woman's side the entire time like from the moment i got there to the moment i left it was always about me and her and she fancied me or she liked me from the very beginning i liked kayla at first but um after getting some time to know britain i actually started to like her more um but yeah like it was it was the, my connection with her was stronger than anybody else uh, other connection and it was uh it was a super romantic connection in my opinion and uh it, it worked out really well like like we we dated for a little bit after the show and you know we, we worked out pretty well um, but yeah, if, if, like I just, we, we clicked because we worked and we worked really well together as a team and we understood each other and we had like a lot of the same like morals and viewpoints and a lot of things. So that's something that I really wanted to explain to people, but I just never really got the chance. We've got Angela. She's asking, are you still in a relationship? I am not. I am not in a relationship anymore. No, I'm not. That actually, uh, that fizzled out a couple of weeks ago. Um, yeah, I mean, we just kind of came to a mutual understanding that this wasn't going to work for us. We're both in a very different niche in terms of what we do. And, uh, yeah, we are no longer together. You're obviously open and thank you for that, James. You're obviously open to date and to give consideration to anyone that is embracing who you are and wanting to love and respect you without color. Are you still open since you shared that? Uh, are you still open to date outside of your race? And how does your family feel about that? <laughs> I, I, I mean, it's, it's funny because everybody wants to push for the equality push of being able to do what you love, date whoever you want. You know, like uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's a fit that's been being pushed since 
the last 10 years. And, you know, it's, it's harder and harder within the African-American community to date outside of your race because there's so many opinions and, and just people always have something to say. And my family is very supportive of whatever I do because, you know, I, I make the most, the best decisions through my heart and my emotions. And um, I, I always choose, you know, with the right intentions. So I'm, I'm, I am open to dating outside of my race. I'm also open to dating it within my race. It's I have not, nothing I've really ever like put a stipulation on in terms of who I can and can't date. I just go to whoever actually likes me for me and understands me and is willing to work with me through whatever I have to put up. Um, and yeah, that's just kind of been my, my mindset ever since I started dating. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna change that just because of the experience. I, uh, I, I like who I like, so that's just kind of how it works. You are, once again, you're a Gen Z. Here's my question for you. Do you, What do you foresee of the future when we think about the, the level and temperature of where our world is at now, whether it's color or government, uh, the way people are making a living, money? Do you believe you and your generation and those generations that are after yours are you looking forward to the future? And do you believe that there's going to be more than enough resources and opportunities and relationships and friendships in the next 20 or 30 years that you have most definitely planning to be here in a world to look forward to? It's, it's, it's very, it's very hard to predict the future because as, as you know, the world is constantly evolving and changing and, and there's always new things to come about. Um, but my, my thing is that one thing that I've, I've kind of noticed throughout 24 years already is that history really just does repeat itself. Like it's just, it's just a never ending cycle. And um, I, I, it's, it's hard to put, put like my finger on like where I think we'll be because I just think that there's, there's so, many, so many new things that come about in everyday society that it, it makes it kind of hard to tell where we're gonna go. But I think that, I, I think that we will evolve to the point where we're going to be more accepting of these things, but until like then it's going to be a very hard struggle, but I don't see it happening for the next 10, maybe 15 years, if I'm being honest. When we think about business, fitness, and wellness, is this something that's going to be long-term for you or do you have other plans or thinking about going oh, this, back to university? <laughs> this is definitely a long-term plan. I, I love the position that I'm in right now where I'm able to kind of create and, and teach and inform and, do what I do as is. So I'm definitely going to try and push this as much as I possibly can. It's actually funny. I'm, I'm actually a class away from graduating and my mother is very upset with me. <laughs> I'm not going back to finish it yet, but um, you know, I'm in a very interesting position with my social media and my, my personality right now. So um, I'm going to try and live it up to the best I can. And when it's time to go back and finish, I will go back and finish. But until then we're going to have some fun. <laughs> You're doing it well. And with that Thank being you. said, you're welcome. <laughs> Thank uh, you very much. I really appreciate it. When someone's looking to work with someone like you, and I believe to work with you and to be educated by you in a world of fitness and wellness, what do you do? This isn't a, this may sound like a commercial type of question, but what do you do <laughs> that stands out from everyone else? Uh, because you're putting, what I'm hearing and what I believe, and I know I'm, I will call bullshit on, especially a guy who's doing it differently. I believe you're in it to win it, to help someone else win it. And you're not saying, hey, come lust and obsess over me. And then, hey, hire me for wellness and fitness. I believe you're doing it. And I, I really believe in my heart, you're, you have really, really good intentions of wanting the best for the other person. You just said it. So I'm, I'm processing to, to formulate the question, what is it about you that makes you more sophisticated, more trustworthy, and much more reliable that, say, I hire you and we're in a gym or we're in a private gym or something, that my the focus is about me and what I have hired you for that your intent and intentions are there for my well-being. I, I think what sets me apart in this category of fitness and wellness in terms of training and, and being with clients in, in that sense 
is that I, I, don't, I, I can teach you all the movements, all the workouts. I can give you the plan and call it a day. That, that, anybody can do that. If I wanted to do that, I could have my own online training process and program and, and have people pay for it and never train in the gym and just let people go about with the program. But that's not what I'm here for. I'm here to help people realize that there is minds behind the madness. There is love to be had with the process. And that's one thing that I strive for is keep telling people that it doesn't have to be a habit that you that you form. It's more of a discipline. You get to fall in love with the process of bettering yourself. And there's nothing better than working on yourself at all times. So I, again, like I can teach you all the workouts, how to, how to do a curl, how to squat, but why are we doing it? What is it gonna do for you in the long term? Not just for your health benefit, but for your wellness benefit. You coming to the gym is coming to better yourself, work on yourself, focus on your discipline, and better your motivation for life. And, and it spews over into everything you could possibly think of. Your gym routine is going to show you how to implement a process through what you do in the gym to what you do at home to what you do before you go to bed. Like It spreads out. And so if I can help you start with learning the process in one specific place, Watch how it carries out into the rest of your life. That is what's most important to me. I like that. And I believe you. Do you find that you use a lot of psychology or do you have any training with this? Because there are two people. You answered the question that I was going to have for you. Uh, that I've noticed there are two separate type of fitness wellness. There's ones that you go on their app or they sign you up or they give you these weekly routines or checklists to to do and then they're either a phone call away or you got to pay extra for them to be more hands-on what would i obtain what would it be in it for me to working with you in a way to where are you more hands-on or are you going to be just blasting me with emails and texts to just answer my questions honestly i, I would have to be more, more hands-on and if that's the profession that i'm going to take and that's the profession we're going to do. So I'm, I'm not going to give you just a couple text messages and emails and calls a week. That's, that, where, where, where does the actual process come from that? I'm going to be the hands-on person that's going to be with you through the entire way so that we're actually working to do what we both plan to do. Because, again, like I, don't, I could have the OnlyFans. I could have the online program, and I could sell it to you for sure. But where, 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 is, where is the actual hands-on effort that comes with that? I want to be there every step of the way so that we're both achieving the goals that we have for you and for me. It's a good answer and it's an honest answer because I know you didn't have that plan because we don't have any of the questions planned. So those that are listening. <laughs> <laughs> we do not. We do not. No, James is not blowing smoke up your ass trying to tell you what you want to hear because he has no idea. <laughs> uh, <laughs> when we think about reality television and where you could go, are you staying within the realm of reality TV or wanting to get more into scripted television? You know, it's funny because a lot of my castmates kind of have that same question asked to them. And when, I, when it comes to me, I think to myself, I say, scripted television is amazing. It's, it's, it's an art that's been here for, for decades, decades. It, it's, it's an art form. And so for me to want to go from reality television into scripted television, first off, I, I feel like I have a head start because I'm already on one of the world's leading uh, networks as, as in Netflix. So I, I definitely could reach into that avenue. But in terms of working and stepping over people that have actually trained and been in classes and have been doing this profession for years on years and years before I even became an idea, like I, I feel like it doesn't do justice to people that, that have worked their entire career to become an actor with, within scripted television. So I think I would have to stay within that reality realm because that's just kind of where my niche is and that's where I, I, I do best unscripted. Like I, I say the things that come to mind and I say it in a thoughtful way. So I think reality television would be, have to be the avenue I take. And I'm right there with you and I appreciate that. Because as you know, like I, I've wanted to get into the world of acting, and I did when I was younger. Things changed, and I ended up saying a prayer in my bedroom, looking out my bedroom window, and the answer was go into public relations. 
Uh, I was not built to go into the military. I was not built to go into law enforcement. I was extremely rebellious. Uh, and uh, so it would not have been suited for me. Now, the younger Steven is like, hey, it, you didn't lose the passion. It's time to get back into it. And what I love most is in this day and age, James, television and radio is power. And most people, as you know, of how things are rolling out without the support of media and, and, and people who do blogs and people who do podcasting, it's very important. I'm going to tell you, I believe it's going to have to be. Uh, and I'm going to say to you, do your best not to dismiss somebody that is in podcasting or not to dismiss their numbers. You never know where a person could go or if someone could pick them up or wherever they could end up being in their career, James, not saying that you do. My point of it is, is my projection for your, your generation and in the future is you're going to most likely have to rely on people that aren't in the mainstream media because media is business. This is a money business industry. The pandemic changed a lot of this, James, where people are doing the pay to play even more now than ever. I never knew, you know, keep in mind a journalist and my responsibility as a representative of the public and for the public is to you. Media companies, their fiduciary responsibility is what it is. It's financial. Their legal responsibility is to their shareholders, investors, and more importantly, James, it's to their advertisers. Everything from newspapers to major media sites, they have a staff and they have things they have to pay for and they have to answer to who's advertising. With that being said, and I say that often, I always, I don't know where I got that from, but I like saying that. <laughs> um, <laughs> where, you know, providing that myself, and I'm going to say, I just did a podcast interview a couple days ago and I really enjoyed it. As you continue to build your career and your exposure, are you finding the value and and to consider where and when you are interviewed, James, that you're going to give other people the opportunity that whether they have 10,000 followers or 100,000 followers or a million followers or whether they're on radio or they're just having a podcast show, where do you see your value in the placement of media and prospecting to build out and to strengthen who James Pendergrass is. That's that that is, that is one thing that I can attest to in terms of you never know where things are going to go for somebody in the future. I um I I, I mean coming from the show, I, I only had I want to say two three thousand followers before the show came out, and I'm I'm now over a hundred thousand. And it, and, all, and it came over two months. So I, I know for a fact how fast this, this, this thing can go where social media just takes you one place and goes anywhere. <laughs> like I, I, I know exactly how powerful it is. So in terms of PR and being able to go to any type of podcast or any appearance or any interview, I really don't shy away from, I, I, really, I really go through any interview that's presented to me almost in a sense because I, I know I, I know that everybody has the potential of one day going to the next level. So with that being said, I mean I, I kind of I don't shy away from the moment and I really go embrace anybody who's actually willing to have me. Um, I love telling my story. I love being in, a, in the light like this where I can actually give back and talk to people in a sense. So I, I, I love this. I, I, I do this all the time and it's one of my favorite things to do. So I don't shy away from interviews or appearances or podcasts at all. this is like this is what I do now. So I, I embrace it. I appreciate that. And that's extremely mature of you. And I'm not saying that in a condescending way. I'm saying that. And even with respect to your representative, your agency with uh, Ava Medina is I, I appreciate the openness because you have to be, because you cannot rely on top tier or so-called major media anymore. Cause it is a pay to play industry. And unless, and here's the thing. And this is what I said to Ava and what we're having a problem with when it comes to PR is there's two main types of clients that I get. There are ones that only are media focused and clout focused. They want to be the next Kim Kardashian. 
I don't, <laughs> I don't do the fluff stuff. That's, that's not me. Cause unless you've got five to $10,000, at least a minimum of $10,000 to pay for a retainer, I, you can't do much without without that if you want to buy it if you want to do it the organic way and to build relationships in long term like the way that i know you want to do and your team wants to do that's what's going to stand out because keep in mind and to set the record straight to anyone who may or may not know we as publicists we don't have to prove ourselves to you or to the public because we're not selling us we're not promoting us we're asking And at times calling in favors to say, please trust James Pendergrass, you know, what your rep's doing. Please trust him. He is a a great person, a good person. And more importantly, he's mature and he's got a really, really great story and a great personality. And you're not going to have to pull from him to try to create something. And then, you know, when, and where am I going with this? Um, You know, when we think about our traditional media, they want to know, okay, who who's following James Pendergrass? And they're going to look to see who's following you, who you're following. And they want to know, okay, if we were to write or have James on a morning show, we're going to get five to 10,000 hits minimum. And if you can do that and they, and they feel happy that Mr. James Pendergrass is going to be on uh, the morning show on a CW and – these people are also going to be hearing and seeing our commercials, or if you're on radio or whatever it may be, you're going to have that commercial exposure. The goal is to turn your friends and family and fans, James, into consumers. And that's uh, the whole point in just sharing with you is most people, not saying you, James, but most people don't get the fact to where when you're hiring a management company, an agency, or a PR person, we can't make you famous. We have to take who you are, your name, your your information, your intellectual property, and we've got to build out something in the hope that someone is going to understand your value without focusing on the numbers. And I like the fact, James, that I don't have a question with this. I wanted to share that and share that with the listeners because it is a number one question I get all the time and ask, you know, about media. I'm like, public relations, media is 1% out of 100. We, I want to know, what do you do? Who are you? What is your plans? What are you, what are you most important about? Are you even passionate about who you are and what you're doing? Do you care about what you're doing? Or are you looking for fast fame and fast money. And that's just the way it is. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. I definitely agree. I agree. Building out and, and strengthening who you are, what do we have to look forward to with you, James, whether it be to it's TikTok or Instagram in a world of wellness, fitness, and fashion, or even unscripted television? What's next? What's happening? Any upcoming photo shoots? Oh, I have I have photo shoots at least twice a week. So I, I, I constantly I'm constantly uploading to my socials and, and letting everybody know what's going on and behind the scenes. Um, I I actually am in the process of doing a couple more shows in the near future. Um, I've been approached to do two more. I can't at least dis- like disclose what it is yet, but I I will be having some more work come out towards the end of May, I believe, and in the end of October. So. We're, we're definitely going to have some more work coming out for you guys. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you guys keep open on socials, I, I'm very open on my socials and I let everybody know basically where I'm at or what I'm doing. And, you know, I, I don't try to hide. I don't try to be like a celebrity that tries to be in the shadows. You're going to see me out and about all the time. That's like one of my main things. So, um, yeah, that's that's my life. We're going to close out soon, but I'm going to play a quick game. We're going to do the game of what would you do? Okay. okay, this is this is going to be very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm winging it and not even okay. planning it. I just, ha- I have a, I love your energy and I'm really appreciative of this opportunity. All right, what would you do? All right, you and your girlfriend are out on, on a date or, or wanting to have lunch and uh, you order the burger and she just orders a salad and a soup and your burger comes out and she's smelling it she's looking at it and she's like 
I really want that and I'm really hungry. And you're like, well, I thought you wanted a salad and soup. And like, yeah, but I just, I didn't eat anything all day. And she wants your burger. Are you going to give her your, what would you do? Give her your burger or cut it in half and share your portion with her? <laughs> I would, this is actually easy. I would easily give her my burger no question the whole burger that, the, the whole burger the whole okay. thing i would pass it straight to her i would take her salad i would eat her salad as my appetizer and then order another burger for myself <laughs> i probably should have said <laughs> and you didn't have extra cash to buy another burger <laughs> all right you didn't have enough cash to buy another burger what would you do i am ordering a large water <laughs> i'm going to drink the water first and then eat the salad yeah, we all know that. We hear that trick all the time. Always drink lots of fluids first. Okay. It's 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 one of the best dieting tips I could ever give to anybody. If you want to be full, drink the water first, always. Okay. It doesn't mess with the digestive system. Too much. Uh, for me, for, to my knowledge, it, it, it's been it's been a beautiful beautiful ride for me. So it, it has not hurt me at all. <laughs> okay. All right. What would you do? Second question. Here's going to be a good one. You're at a barbecue with your girlfriend and you know that one of your best buds is there and he's single and he's been hot and to trotting for your girlfriend. Oh, all right. Wait a minute. You're at the barbecue <laughs> and the host comes over and he has to take a quick phone call and ask if you can man the barbecue. Would you leave your girlfriend there with your best bud or would you give a reason as to why you can't help out and finish the barbecue? Um, ooh, this is, this is tough. On, honestly, it's, this is like a trick question because if he was your best friend, would he actually really be interested in your woman? Um, but I would say I would go help the barbecue. I, I would, I would go help where my friend needs me. I would take care of it. Um, it'd be, I mean, if you're in a relationship with your girlfriend, then, Trust has to be involved at all times. So I'm either trusting her to not fall or, fall or fall for his plan, or I'm trusting my best friend apparently for not going for my woman. But either way, I'm going to be okay. <laughs> you, you could have also said, and this would have been my reasoning. I would have, uh, you could have said to your girlfriend, "Hey, do you want to come help, and we can speed up and 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 double time this and get the barbecue done quickly." Oh, yeah. I mean, that works, too. That, 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 that works, too. I wasn't setting you up. I was just seeing where you would go. But once again, maturity, <laughs> maturity, maturity. All right. Last question. What would you do? Uh, you, you're, do you eat pizza? I, I, oh, I love pizza. Okay. <laughs> so you, you ordered a pie, and it's one of your favorite pies, but it's not a big one. It's one of the personal, the little tiny ones. And we all know okay. you're out in L.A. We all know everything's dinky dinky out there minuscule yes Very. always <laughs> all right uh you get a pie and you leave it on a table you go to a friend's house and you leave it on the table and your friend's dog eats your pie and there's only half left on the floor that the dog didn't get to finish would you still eat it or would you let the dog finish it did the dog lick the other half no i'm definitely eating it yeah. I, I i'm eating it 100 yeah it was pizza's already pizza. cut up yeah pizza's pizza i'm eating it 100%. <laughs> i hope you didn't mind that question just came to me because for myself i don't know if i would i probably would skeeve thinking okay the dog was there there's got to be dog hair on the floor then there's got to be dog hair somewhere in the pizza i just let the dog fucking eat it no, nah, that's, uh, trust me, I'm telling you, pizza is in my top three food categories <laughs> of all time. I've been eating this since I was maybe seven years old, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm an addict. I'm an addict for pizza, so I would 100%, especially if it's my favorite pizza, oh, yeah, it's, it's gone. Okay. It's gone. How'd you like those <laughs> questions? That was actually really fun. I was not expecting that, but I actually had a lot of fun right there. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite uh, pizza joint out there in L.A.? Ooh, see, it's it's weird because my my father is a super bougie eating person, so he likes to eat the, the nicer things. But honestly, I'm cool with some Pizza Hut, some Pizza Hut, Pizza Hut with the cheesy crust, and really? I I'm good. I'm really good. Yeah. 
I, I don't know how you do it, James. Thank God for you being in your young 20s because it's it tastes like oil to me. I cannot do no, Yeah, no. I can't do Pizza Hut. I rather, Come if on. you were to tell me, all right, if someone were to ask me, Steven, what would you do, Pizza Hut or Domino's? Hands down, I pick Domino's. Please, no. Please, yes, please I have to. Please I, take that back. Oh my gosh. We I'm were not going to so lie to well, you and Steven. tell you that I can eat a slice of Pizza Hut <laughs> and then be pissing out of my ass after eating it. No, is, I, is that what happens? It's, yeah, is it's, that? it's the oil. Yeah, my tummy does not like it. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't get the baps, the burning ass piss shits. I just get a little bit of water shits from eating Pizza Hut. I do. <laughs> this is an experience I've never had, so maybe it's different for everybody else. But for me, that is the greatest pizza in this city by far. You got a titanium's tummy. That's just what it comes down to. Oh yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The strongest. The strongest for sure. <laughs> you got it. I've, 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 I've been eating. I've been eating bad food since I was a kid. So yeah, I've, I'm, I'm strong. <laughs> oh well, that's why. Let me tell you something. No, I've I've always had a sensitive tummy. So yeah, uh, can't even do <laughs> ice cream. No, but my body's changing. I'm going into my. I'm going to tell you and let me know your thoughts on this. I'm going into my seven year so i feel the changes coming on i'm not eating i'm starting to not eat certain foods i used to eat I'm starting to pick up new certain foods and i'm actually really excited i just ordered a new cookware set i'm looking forward to uh experiencing to eat vegan i'm not going completely vegan Whoa. but i have some things i want to start making like burritos and uh bouillonnaise but you don't use the beef you use uh lentils i want to start trying that See, I, I, I like the idea of going vegan or going half vegan or, or trying to eat more vegan diet. But the problem is for me in the city of Los Angeles, that the healthier you try and go, the more expensive it really gets. And at some point you start to ask yourself, is it really, really worth it to have vegan cheese on my sale? <laughs> it's, 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 it's tough. It's very tough. But I mean, I, I, I support it. I support you 100% behind that for sure. Yeah, I'll let you know. Honestly, I'll let you know the results. You've got my private numbers. Uh, stay in touch. And seriously, if I have any questions or or anything at all, I would love to be able to have the opportunity to reach out to you. Yeah, most definitely. I, I'm, I'm very interested to see how this goes for you because maybe, maybe I could follow in your footsteps. Maybe. That's a strong maybe. Yeah, I'll let you, like I said, I'm not, I'm not jump starting. And here's the thing. I've always eaten James to my blood type. Um, I'm A positive. With that, I can eat fish, vegetables, fruits. I cannot do, honestly, I cannot do heavy on the beef or on the meat. What? Yeah, no. No, I, wow. I, I went to one of the, I have, um, I used to work as a dietary aide for the state of New Jersey. And okay. um, I had a top award-winning uh, dietitian, not only with the state of New Jersey, give me uh, bedside tips, but I also worked with another uh, dietitian and we did a whole scan. We did a whole test of uh, allergy test, uh, uh, you know, food, allergic, everything under the sun. I got pricked, poked, blood work taken, everything. Um, and then we just, you know, it turns out to where, and the dietitian had said, when people start eating to their blood type, for most, it works better than to try to force someone to eat not in their blood type so type o can do all the meat that they want i cannot I, I i can get away with it once or twice and then i start feeling like shit and i i can't touch it for a couple days wow wow maybe I, maybe it's take you through an iron training of this of the stomach so that we can we can we can work on this together because <laughs> i've never heard that before that is very interesting wow yep. What I'm planning on making when I get my new uh, Wolfgang Puck set, lentil bouillonnaise, if I'm saying that right, bouillonnaise, uh, butternut squash risotto with leeks and spinach. What I'm really excited about is Frankie's Bombay burritos. If you were to see these pics right now. And then Frankie's Bombay burritos. Frankie's Bombay burritos. It's got pickled onions and cilantro mint chutney in it. And then you're uh, gonna be you're uh, gonna be cooking up a storm over there, aren't you? Oh, I am. I love I love cooking, especially in in uh, um, uh, 
those pans stainless steel and uh coconut okay. rice bowls this looks really really good okay now you're trying to make me hungry this is this is this is starting to turn left here <laughs> mm -hmm. and if you see these pictures you would never think that this was vegan it looks like regular food that we eat but a lot more elegant like your your dad style a lot more um a lot more elevated and bougie okay yeah that's 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 not up my alley so yeah that, that's all you guys i give that to you guys for sure <laughs> i will seriously let you know because i've I have a good feeling uh, with that. And what I love most about cooking in stainless steel uh, instead of other types is there's no transference of color or flavors. So it just, I don't know what you cook with, but definitely utilize a really, really good stainless steel, not a thin Walmart cheap. I mean, get a really good stainless and uh, you'll find a difference in your foods and the flavors and just how much cleaner and um uh, and then even steaming rice, like, get, you know, steam your rice in stainless and it reduces uh, what the carbohydrates by 40%. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, that sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. See, okay. I'm not in your world of fitness and wellness, but I got some good tips too. No, yeah, I definitely, <laughs> I, I needed that. I needed that. I'm, I'm very curious to hear about, about your vegan experience so that I can kind of, kind of maneuver around that as well. So yeah, I'm, I'm interested for sure. Absolutely. Who would you like to give a shout out to, James? Uh, the man of the hour, my father, I would love to give a big shout out to my dad. Um, he's actually on the way back from Cancun right now. He's just living his, living his amazing life. So, um, I, I hope he's listening right now and a uh, big shout out to him. And any closing thoughts at all, James? Uh, this was great. I had a great time with you today. This was really awesome. Thank you for asking me these super deep questions and, you know, getting to know me on a deeper level. And I appreciate being here with you. You're welcome. And as I'm seeing here, all things James Pendergrass, you got to add the underscore. I'm That's on your Instagram. And I'm pulling back up your TikTok. Your TikTok is the same handle. Uh, no, actually, it's, no. James dot Pendergrass. That's it. Yeah. All right. So all things James Pendergrass. TikTok is James dot Pendergrass. That's P-E-N-D-E-R-G-R-A-S-S. -S. Instagram is James Pendergrass. Just add the underscore at the end of that. James, thank you for being with us today. This has been fun. This has been very fun. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Just hold the line, James, and uh, I'll get right back to you once we're off. Sounds good. Thank you again to everyone for being with us today, live on air with Stephen Corco on Power 98.5. Whether you're listening to us on Alexa, the Android or iOS app, or on our website, power985.com. We are the premier destination for all things news, music, sports, reality TV, and more, and always all the important stuff. And we're great, great people like James Pendergrass. Looking forward to having him on again. We have a new show. I believe Catherine is coming back, Catherine and Company, next week. Remember, go to power985.com. I'm going there right now. Check the schedule for anything upcoming. We also have live DJ uh, that's happening with Jackson Hume. He's out there in the UK. He is a uh, professional fighter. When you go to the website, just either click on live music or you can go to talk shows. Either way, it's there. And thank you again to... Uh, Ryan Murphy, four-time Olympic gold medalist, want to give this uh, beautiful review that he gave online and what he shared. I'm going to pull it up right now and and uh, just read that. We're going to go over to news, just hit talk shows, scroll down. Uh, Ryan Murphy had wrote, and we ended up uh, sharing this on the website, uh, which is so important. Thanks to Stephen Cuoco for the in-depth chat. Love talking about my upcoming wedding, training methods, and work with Goldfish Swim and water safety, as well as the competitive mentality I've developed throughout my career. Thank you to Ryan Murphy for that. Once again, Ryan Murphy is a four-time Olympic gold medalist, six-time Olympic medalist, and world record holder. He's getting ready for Paris 2024. A lot are in Olympics and Paralympics. Uh, other than that, I appreciate you guys. Thank you for all the years, the love, the support. Uh, remember, whether you're on the iOS uh, app or the website, don't hesitate to click the messenger in the bottom right hand corner. Always love the questions, shout outs and more. Have a great day, everyone.
Send us on your socials and let's connect.